Yo, what's up, man? We're back. First smoke of the day. It's episode 33. It's your host, Pat Gods. I'm here with my co-host, Blackleaf. What up, what up? You already know. We got a special guest in the building today. My man came straight from Compton, not too far away, but he's here right now. It's Masonic Smoker. What up, homie? What's cracking, man? Thank you guys for, you know, inviting me to the first smoke of the day. It's a, it's an honor. Of- Big Masonic. <laughs> yeah. Bro, it's it's been dope learning about your story and uh and to have you on is was just necessary. For no sure. doubt. No the doubt. The roots and everything is is crazy and and you know, we we got a we got a dope chance yesterday to chill with you at your store on Fairfax. Yes, sir. And uh and get into the now. You know what I mean? We we were talking about the now and and you know, where you're at now with everything. And pre-show, we we got into a little bit about the before, but, you know, just like with everything, we like to start with the beginning, <laughs> go into that middle, and then, you know, fast track back up to where you're at now, which is impressive, homie. Like, kudos to you, bro, from, you know, where you, where you come from and how you've taken a different path and kind of stayed true to who your identity is, who you are, you know what I mean? And making that work for your brand, that's not easy to do. So, you know. I mean, uh, as far as the beginning is concerned, I've been a fan of smoking since like, you know, I'd imagine when a lot of people started smoking, ninth grade, eighth grade summer, you know. So as soon as I took my first puff, I fell in love with it. And I'm a good, uh, I got good intuition. And I just knew like, even with all the stigma of weed being wrong, don't get me wrong, I don't encourage kids to start smoking at 15 but you know it kind of kept me grounded and honestly kept me out of trouble in the sense that you know i had to keep it to myself and go smoke and i wouldn't go smoke with knuckleheads i would go smoke by myself (laughs) but yeah uh always been a fan of the smoke uh and it just brought me here today you know always smoked every day didn't really care what anybody said like it's bad and this this and that i was always my form of meditation because you know, I grew up in the hood, but, you know, it wasn't all rainbows and stuff all the time. So it was my way of coping with my environment, too, you know, unknowingly. So it helped me get through through life. Point blank period. It's my it's my meditation. You know, it's medication. I love that. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. What were you into before you started smoking? Was it because I see you're still into like comic books and and just like real you know, cool artsy stuff. Is that, was that the same stuff you were mm-hmm. into before you got into weed? Always, always a little nerd, you know, always like video games, always like superhero shit like that. But, uh, the comic books didn't come till later. Like, you know, when I got my first pack of sour diesel, my dad bought me my first pack of sour D when I graduated high school. <laughs> so I like, I made a little money and I was always into the comic book shit. So I made it my mission to make that my hobby. So I went to the comic book shop. And just load it up on tons of Green Lantern, Black Knight series, and, you know, tons of other stuff, tons of Batman stuff. And I just sat on it. And, you know, little by little, I picked up, started reading them. And, you know, that was, that was, you know, senior year. So it's been at least 10 years that I've been reading these comics, kind of like a avidly, an avid comic book reader. Every Wednesday, I go and buy a bunch of comics from the comic book store. But yeah, always been a nerd at heart, for sure. Well, and not yeah. to like jump into anything, but, and then now you made your own, which is like, I mean, but before all that, I know Pat Gods likes to say before there was a middle and an end, there was a beginning. What was the first time you ever smoked weed? Ooh, uh, it could have <laughs> been, it could have been the time that, uh, my buddy, uh, Javante actually, not Jerome, uh-huh. uh, actually, uh, he like gave me a sack and I rolled it up, but I forgot to crunch it down. And it just all fell through the paper. And then the next day he had it all crunched up and we found out how to make a gravity bong. And it was like cat piss. And we just threw it in the little screwdriver deal. I mean, the little nut bolt and the two liter bong that we made through with a two liter uh, Coca-Cola bottle. And that was like the first time. And and it's been nonstop ever since. Like every day after that, like I was like, you know, hey, like, can we get more of that? And, you know, it turned into a monster. Damn, in cat a, piss in a is good a heady way. strain, In too. a good way, yeah. Yeah. That's Ooh. what he said it was. You know what I mean? You know how guys are. That, eh, you know, I, that's just <laughs> what he said it was. I can't, I can't really vouch for the authenticity behind if it was actually cat piss, you know? And as far as I was concerned at the time, it was like, 
who cares what it is? You know, I just want some weed, you know, but, you know, cat piss for sure. I see it making a, a little bit more waves now, you know, especially with that guy, uh, K Fellow or something like that. I see he does a, a cat piss variety through, Unique the, through the cookies brand or something like that. But That's yeah. awesome. And so it started there. And then how did it progress? If you don't mind me asking. <laughs> oh, uh, well, I fell in love with it. So as soon as I smoked it, I went and uh, I, I suck it. I, I, I saw it. I saw it after it. So I just went around the block like a weirdo. And I rode around on my on my uh, beach cruiser, seen a guy that looked like he was selling it, asked him. He was. And that was my dealer from then on. Uh, you know, it was in the cul-de-sac on 111th and Avalon from some, you know, some individuals that were, you know, getting down like that. So that's who I had to get my first taste of weed off of. There wasn't like a storefront with a kiosk and, you know, nice, you know, whatever people to help you. It was more like, you know, hush, hush, you know, you, you, you don't know what will happen. 20s. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Good old days, man. I think Pat God knows a little bit about that. Those were, I mean, those, those, we come from Florida, so we, we definitely didn't have that. I may be a little, how old are you? I'm 29. You're young, man. Yeah. Fucking hell. Accomplished I'm, a I'm lot. I'm old. This dude's old as shit. Yeah, yeah. Don't even ask. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, nah, but you've accomplished a lot, man. 29. That's impressive, bro. Literally. Yeah. And, you know, having the store on Fairfax and we'll, we, di as we digress a little bit, we'll, we'll jump back ahead into that. But, for for your age and where you came up in the game and how quickly you were able to to kind of pivot and do something different you know you add something different to the game and i think everything about your brand is like it's a personal brand but it's your brand it's like really you it's your identity and and you've been able to identify with people in the culture from all parts i mean yesterday we were there those people riding up farmers from bakersfield Yep. And they're riding up just to talk and get stuff and purchase things. And it's just like, you can see it lives there. So as like, you know, as a younger, younger kid and you're riding around scoring, scoring bags or whatever, what did you start hustling or did you start growing? Like, well, what was uh, it like from there? So, so as you know, we used to buy stress sacks, $20, four bags. That'll hold you off for a cool minute. So it wasn't like a big expense, but as I got introduced to like, chronic and kush that's when you really have to piece up with the homies or like you you didn't have a copious amount of weed uh i wasn't the greatest hustler either when it came to you know oh you know i'm gonna go pick up x amount of weed and cover my nut you know it was just like i'm gonna go pick up some weed and have maybe the homies would throw in you know because my parents they were like they're a little liberal like moms knew what was up she was like you know whatever you know better than you know, they grew up in the hood, too. So they're like better than going and hanging out with the homies, you know, like just smoke at the house, figure it out. That's what I thought in my head. So whatever way I figured it out, it was just like, you know, whatever lunch money I would have had, I would have used it for weed, you know, or things like that. It was never like, oh, let me go use my lunch money to invest in weed and then supply myself. It was kind of <laughs> just like sometimes. Yeah, but it was never like, oh, Mace is like a. Or I was a sluggo at the time. You know, sluggo, sluggo don't don't really do that. He just smokes weed with the homies, you know, because I'm in the hood, you know, and, you know, I'm not they don't really have that much money either. We're all in the same fucking boat, you know, so it's like I just had a little bit more than them and my parents were chill. So I was like the chill homie on the block where booze would come kick it and we just smoke and all on the strength of, you know, the Pena family that, you know, a lot of kids had a easier you know, hangout spot than some other kids, you know, we don't get me wrong. It wasn't all chill, but like, for the most part, they kind of overlooked the fact that there was a bunch of high schoolers getting high in a room, you know, it's, 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 it's a different time. I know kids still do it nowadays and there's families like that. It's probably not talked about a lot, but you know, it's better than having your kids drinking in a fucking corner of the room, you a know, a thousand percent. Yeah. You or, got the literal, I got five on it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That was the good old days, man. And and you just not everybody had it like that. So whoever had it had it, and we just all kind of made it work. I grew up in a neighborhood where all the kids smoked. We played basketball, smoked together, hang out at the house, get high, play Call of Duty, listen to music, so on and so forth. You know, not everybody went and grabbed the plant and turned it into something lucrative. A lot of us, you know, just went into reality, got a job, had some kids, so on and so forth. I was the one that kind of always like 
had a some weed on me, always smoke. Then they're like, oh, I have to stop smoking because I'm going to get a job type shit. I me, mean, I was like, I'll get some fake piss, you know, like I'll figure it out. I'm not going to quit smoking. <laughs> yeah. Straight up. <laughs> not for real. Did you have any jobs coming up? Like talk about a that. A lot of jobs. I mean, I started, I had a kid at 18. So as soon as I turned 18, I had a kid, I had to get a job to feed him. So I got a job as a roofer with one of my best friend's dad's uh, Midwest Roofing in Gardena. I worked there for like close to a year. And then I got fired from there for, uh, I think I just got in a dispute with my foreman where he was just like, I didn't like the way he was talking to me. So I, I dipped. And then uh, I was a good worker though. And then I got into uh, painting with some dude in San Pedro. And me and him, we, we would just go to houses and paint their house. And that was just another random job I had. And then I got into demolition alexander's demolition in gardena i was doing demo i'll break down a whole house they used to have me go up on the roof because i used to do roofing so i would tear down your roof from the bottom to the, from the top to the bottom and uh, i did that for like a year uh got fired from that job for smoking i would uh i would drive back with all the guys in the in the on the 405 going like <laughs> 60 drinking red bull smoking my homegrown and they were like you know most of these guys didn't speak english and they're just like they're like you know, they're scared, <laughs> you know, and then one of them got, you know, wind to the managers at Alexander. And then I came, I came to the job site to come to work. It was like six in the morning. That's when we had the clock in. He's like, hey, come over here. Like, we heard you were smoking, you know, with the guys. I'm, Man, they lying. He's like, nah, you're lying. I was like, whatever. I'll pack my shit and go, whatever. I go home. I pick up my son. I collapse my back. That was the last day my back was going to give in on me. So if I would have went to work that day and picked something up done something strenuous where I was like in a weird position, I would have been laid out. Something bad could have happened. So like the same day I got, you know, laid off, I picked up my son when I got home, I collapsed on the ground. I was yelling out for my brother-in-law like, Hey, Hey, he's like, what's happening, dude. I'm like, I like collapsed, you know, you just um, named very difficult jobs too. Yeah. Those are hard manual labor. Jobs. And then, and then I worked a uh, car wash for a long time. I used to wash people's cars. Very, every job I did, I did it to the best of my ability. I wasn't like, man, I only get paid X amount of money. Like, fuck. It was all like, man, let me just crunch this day out. Cause I have something to look forward to, which is good weed and my plants and a good, you know, a life, you know? So I always had something to look forward to. And, you know, I did a, all those jobs, I did car wash, I did a sausage factory, and then I worked as a pharmacy technician for five years at Rite Aid. So I used to count medicine, write people's prescriptions, call your doctor when you know you didn't do your refill, all that shit. And I did it to the best of my ability. Like I was a real civil person, you know, I provided to the community in Paramount that I used to work in. And they all knew me, they all still know me. If I roll up, even walk through the aisles, like, oh hey, like we miss you. Yeah, because I used to do my job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> Dude, that's that. a lot of jobs too. Yep. Yeah. So you've been busy up until this point. Yeah. And my dad is an owner operator of a tow truck company. So growing up, he would always make us like wash trucks, carpool with the guys, pull levers. Free know. labor. Yeah. I went through that too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> huh. That's that's the best <laughs> shit. That's the best shit. Your dad's like, you're trying to hear. We're going to do a very you dangerous you were job. You doing something this weekend? <laughs> uh, exactly. You're watching cartoons. <laughs> no. Not You know, you're going to go clean a yard. You know what I mean? <laughs> Through all that, one thing stayed the same, though. Cannabis. Cannabis. Always, always had. The, and never got, like, discouraged or anything. Like, ah, like, I, I'm not going to water today. I'm not going to smoke today. It was like, that was what the day revolved around. When I got my first paycheck at the sausage factory, which was like one of the first real jobs I got where I got a paycheck instead of getting paid like cash and shit. I went right to like some nursery, bought a bunch of soil and just like invested in my garden that I had at the time. And you know, just things like that. Damn, man. Yeah. Wow. At what, like what, so you were smoking at what age did you start, you know, touching the plant and, and popping the seeds? And I remember when I graduated high school, my dad got me that pound and he got me like a bunch of clones and I wasn't into like growing it. I was just a smoker. I didn't know nothing about growing. I popped the seed here and there. I'll watch it grow. And then I would always be stuck in being a kid. So I like let it die. So I've always played with the plant, but this was like, Hey son, like we got you these plants. And you know, I'm just like, man, I got a pound of sour diesel right here. Like I'm not, you know, so I, whatever, like that never clicked. But then like, 
we moved from the house and then we moved to Compton. And now we, I had like my own backyard to play with, you know, living with my parents. I'm probably like 18 at the time. So like 18 years old is when I like, let's see what I could do. Start grabbing bag seeds. Oh, I just, my cousin will be like, oh, I went to this shop and they gave me this random app gooey clone. Like you want to grow it? Fuck it. Like throw it in whatever's laying around the house. You know, uh, the guy that gave us those clones taught my dad how to grow. And his, his uh, regiment was like a 50-50 ratio of steer manure and, and uh, miracle Girl, the worst, you know? So we're like, okay, let's go grab some steer manure and, and, and some, you know, and some miracle Girl and let's get to growing. And, you know, started, started with that. And then, you know, my friends would come up, hey, dude, like my buddy uses Fox Farm. You should use Fox Farm. All right, let's use Fox Farm. Hop on Instagram. Oh, no, uh, we grow organic. I use nectar for the gods. Okay, use nectar for the gods. Oh, I build my own soil. Oh, KNF. Oh, this. Oh, that. You know, just like went up the ladder. But safe to say at least 10 years ago. A lot of trial and error, that sounds like. And this whole time, do you can you remember what was the first strain you ever tried to grow? Bag seeds. I I grew like a Ah, half goo. I got a bunch of that half gooey that I got from my cousin. Fire Uh, strain. So bag seeds, the half gooey I got from my cousin. My buddy PK Trap Bacon. Uh, one of the first dudes that ever like even mentioned me in any like type of growing circle. I got invited into his life and he gifted me a bunch of Cherry Hill crosses and some Black Lime Reserve orange cookie crosses that he had made. So like these are some of the first things I ever grew. And then Harry Palms was one of the first people to ever give me seeds. And, uh, you know, Oni, all these people were some of the first people to ever put genetics in my hand, like in, in a serious caliber. But 10 years ago bag seeds random clones shit like that yeah wow a lot of trial and error yeah that that really honed your knife your skills you know yeah no doubt starting from from seed point you know there was nobody was ever like this is how you bust out a six lighter or like it was just like here goes nothing you know and was it always outside or were you transferring inside i did outside point? until i got my first till i found out like there was an income tax check you know i was like hey like Hey, mom, I heard there's like an income tax check <laughs> about that. You know, like you want your income tax check, you're going to have to start paying rent. That's fine with me. Let's see what we could do, you know? So that was our agreement. So I got my income tax check because I worked, you know, I was, a, a, you know, paid taxes. So I got it and I invested in my first indoor. So I got two Gavitas and two T5s. I split my garage in half and um, I did my first growing. There was an R&D grow. I was doing Korean natural farming at the time. This was five years ago, probably. Bro, you keep diving in the deep end. Yeah. Every single side. Okay. Like I've been, I've been like all this, like this Korean nat- natural farming, you're, you're just getting wind of it. Indigenous microorganisms, you know, all these, you know, concoctions. It's like, it's like, it's like an alchemy almost, you know, but I did that R and D style with not too many people to allude to under like a short ceiling with Gavitas. I was just jumping the gun on everything. Everything that I liked, I tried to mimic it. Oh, he has Gavitas. I'm going to buy those. Oh, KNF. I like KNF. I like the ethics behind it. You know, it's so clean. It's so natural. So I did my first run, uh, you know, indoor. Of, uh, and I did my first, so I did my first KNF indoor run. I, you know, I harvested my shit. I paid off the guy that grew my room with that weed. And I still owed him some money on top of that. Paid him that too. Because that's what you got to do. Uh, and then I did my first, uh, I was like, man, I was already doing, I did my Wilson and then I was growing a bunch of stuff. And then I had like a conversation where I kind of got sat down with Oni. He's like, you should like focus more on your breeding. So I did my first Wilson hybridization inside doors, indoor. So my first Wilson hybrids were done inside. Yeah. Wow. And this was years ago. Big shout out Oni Seed Co. Yeah. for putting in the work to help out Masonic and make sure. I mean, that's awesome. Didn't have yeah. to do that. Yeah. He he sounds like a good big homie. Yeah. Really good big homie. They don't have to, nobody does this for you know, a lot of people that's don't do saying. this. For He's people. came up in multiple episodes too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Shout out Bloom Seed Co. and Harry Palms as yeah. well. Yeah. Found the trop cookies. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Man. He was the first person to give me seeds, Bloom Seed Co. And then Oni, they was all when we were all together. We were all at the same table at one point in our lives. And then, you know, people, differences, whatever, so forth. But I'm still cool with everybody. But Oni is my main man. Like, that's my guy. Because he's always like, he believes in me, you know? And you I just collab. Yep. Big collab, bro. Yeah. A lot of hashes going around. 
And I see your name on it. Yes, sir. And his name. Yeah. Yes, sir. That's fucking dope. Huge, man. Huge. So transferring into, into the backyard now, you guys moved. You're with the fam. You're getting your income tax check. You know, he had to sit down with you. What what was it like after you started focusing more on the breeding and stuff? Like what kind of change? Because I did you did you start focusing more on the branding as well at that time? It was or? all natural, man. Like it was never like, man, I'm going to be a namesake, you know? <sighs> right. But it you was, knew you had to. It was I've always have a name. I know how to like, you know how kids are with phones and like they just know how to use the phone. I knew how to use the phone when a lot of guys didn't know how to use the phone. I knew how to make a a meme. I knew how to drive the people. Like, it's, it's just, I wouldn't call it like, if you put a name behind it, it's marketing. You know what I mean? But right. I was just doing it because I, that's what I did. I like, you can move people with your phone. Yeah. And I did it like, and I still do it. In what, a weird way, what, you know. What's the meaning behind Masonic Smoker? Uh, it just kind of happened natural too. Like I'm popping Mason jars. I'm a smoker. Oh, Masonic see, I Smoker. I don't. Think, I don't think people knew that. Yeah, that. I mean, that's there dope. is. want to take it the other way. That's dope, though. That's yeah. the abridged, safe for, for work version. Yeah, you know, that PG. Yeah, that's <laughs> the super PG. Yeah, someone's gonna hit you up. And be like, they're gonna send you a snippet of what the the. No. Th yeah, yeah. This is what he really means. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. With the triple I or the I yeah. and the triangle, people are. Are you in this the smoke smoke Illuminati? Nah, <laughs> man. I'm just. Nothing, nothing to do with I, any I secret like the, fashion, you know? You know what's dope is that all the best fire comes in a mason jar. Anybody that, that's been in California knows that. Yep. And so having a Masonic smoker, I like that a lot. And you were talking, you were talking yesterday about levels of smokers. Talk about that a little bit. Cause like, you know, I'm a flower guy. Yeah. There's flower guys. And then you got your hash guys. What, you know, tell the people, you know, what, what's, what's the difference? So, so the main thing I was ex like trying to say is like, get the most respectable thing is getting it how you live. You know what I mean? So don't get me wrong. I'd imagine everybody wants to be smoking at the caliber, whether it be flour or hash that you smoke flour, I smoke hash. Of course, everybody would want that, but you got to get it how you live. So it's more respectable to see someone like, you know smoke diamonds than try to like do something they should their pockets don't align with you know what i mean i i don't know how to explain it but there's levels to the smoke and safe to say like there's a secret club of full melt snobs that you know you got to know somebody to grab that stuff and Similar it just is what it is and same thing with the flower there's the guys that get their hands on the idea of the flower it ain't even made yet you know and they're already allocated you know so we There's, just got one of the no budget gang. What's that? I so the gang out of Chicago or something would. I'm, <laughs> I'm just laughing. I love. It. I like the name. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, freaking! Uh, uh, Mr. Cushington was telling us yeah, about it. Light work, light work. You know that's the. I don't know. Shoot, I don't yeah. know, but you know they want all they want all the small batch. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, so yeah. Saint Small Batch. Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah. There, the, that's the what smallest, it is. most embryo, you know, little baby born batch. You yep. know, that's what they want. Shout out to Shoe. That's my homie, yep. too. <laughs> yeah, straight up. <laughs> See? It's true. And hash and flour, they basically are the same. There's levels to it, just like you're speaking yeah. on. Uh, talk, keep, if you don't mind, keep going into that a little bit. You, you spoke on it in the vlog. What's the level of the hash smoker? Yeah. Like, for if you're a flour there, guy, I wouldn't even <laughs> say that. It's just like, you know, Safe to say there's 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 levels to the smoke and and there's like the secret club of hash smokers that, you know, not the whole world is in tune with, you know, and it's not secret. If you look, you'll find, you know, and same thing with the weed guys, you know, they got some shit they ain't sharing with everybody, you know, and, you know, for the public. But it's a whole nother story, you know, but this is like amongst our circle, our peers, you know. It's, 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 uh, there's some inclusive, exclusive stuff for sure. But just like you laid it out, you could be a part of that if they buy your seeds and they, they grow their own homegrown and you literally are part of that homegrown club you, of boutique cannabis that no one can get, but you and a couple of people around you. You hang around the right people enough, whether it, it, it be vicariously growing my seeds, like you're going to bump into hash. 
<laughs> yeah. I like that. Yeah. And it happens too many times. You know, you, you know, people want what they want. And if they want to not have hashed and whatever, if they want flour, they know where to hang, whatever the case be. It's just getting in tune with, you know, information. Yep. And seeds, my seeds for sure will bring you the hash. That, that's, that's a fact. Is so when you, when you got into breeding and and you decided to to dive more into that, was that more of your thought process that you wanted to find stuff that was going to do well with hash? So it it kind of happened like I'm working with our team strains, which is the Oni varieties, all the papayas, all the tropicanas, and it just so happens that they're hashers. It was never like oh. These are hashers. These are strains I want to work with. It was more like, no, I like papaya. I like Tropicana. These are my boys. I'm going to make strains. Oh, shit. They just so happen to be some of the better hashers on the market. Wow. So that was just extra. You know? A little, wow. little ribbon. A little kung fu action yeah, yeah. came through. <laughs> <laughs> That's dope as hell. You know, and you know what's so dope is that you're so close to the streets. Like, you're, you're in the streets. You know what I mean? Like, you're, you're still true to the core of the beginnings of a journey whereas now you got accolades that are are pretty dope you know not a lot of people have their own store not a lot of people are, are partnering up with big companies like oni seco and and having things like that and and even even getting out and about and and taking your brand to further levels and stuff now how do you feel about you know taking it from the backyard and it like becoming like a real thing now to where you're like, you know what, this is, this is a, this is my life. Like this is. It's, it's, it's surreal, man. <laughs> uh, I see a lot of my homies that, that did kind of like, you see Trill, that's a good friend of mine. Like absolutely same, same, same deal. And he's, I, I look at him as way bigger, you know? So uh, becoming a household name in the LA weekly three times showing my mom, you know, uh, lines all the way from from uh you know one whole block i'm talking about a thousand people lined up you know from from uh people say like i used to do lives in my car i used to go live in my car on my break from rite aid and you know i just no shame but, real but, but change you wow, know wow man and i it's, think it's dope that's what people like gravitate towards like when i started looking at your page and your movement um the first thing I noticed was like, you know, you, it, it was evident that you didn't care what people thought yep. with any, anything that you do yep. with any of your brand or anything in your life. So those type of creators always have more people gravitate towards because deep down inside, I feel like we all desire that as people to just care less about what people think or yep. what people might say or whatever. And there's a lot more of those people than there are the like, cool people i think in life you know what i mean like there's i feel like there's a lot more people that you know feel like it's harder for them to find their community so it's kind of cool that now there's there's things happening that we can step out and you know be seen like you can line those kids up and you know have things happening now to where you can connect with the culture have a store on fairfax you know what i'm saying yeah it's uh it's night and day for sure uh, never in a million years did I think I'd have a store on Fairfax. I would joke as a kid, what if we had a strain? What if we named a strain? That's always been a joke. Always looked at high times. So it's dope to be at, uh, at the table with a lot of known breeders and brands and smokers like Emerald Cup. We went through, I couldn't walk a couple feet without knowing someone, someone I knew, someone I liked, admired or vice versa. So it's nice to be a part of this culture. I really respect it. I'm very thankful of whoever uh, takes kind to, you know, that for sure. Yeah, you, know. you, you guys too. You know? Nah, man. I'm just like Pat God's brought up with Mr. Cushington. You also attach your face and, you know, to the brand, which I, I mean, if Pat God's, if you don't mind speaking on, I know you spoke on it before, but it, it, it you know, you, you, you're all in. Yeah, they say like if you put your name on the brand, basically, like if your face is on the brand, like there's no plan B at that point. Yep. Like it's your identity at stake. Yep. So like you're all the fuck in. Yep. Know? And and that's that's the the beauty of uh when people make LLCs, you know, like 
you could fuck it up and just make another one with me. Yeah. Like you fuck it up, you gotta fix it. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's no running away from you know my it's face. Your face. So yeah. yeah, man, it's it's a it really you know makes me more responsible. I can't oh. fuck myself up. You know what I mean? So when you put your your life on the line and and that's your brand too, like dude, you know, good luck. You know what I mean? Because it's hard out there. You know. They Mr. Know, Cushington wow. doing a great job too, because if he's putting his face on that product, fucking, he's crushing it big time. You know, but it's rare in our industry, yeah. and that's why I bring it up is because that's the second time, that's the only the second time I've seen it now. You know, going far forward, no doubt. What was the inspiration behind things like, uh, like your shirt you're wearing? This my mom put, took a picture of me holding my chicken, and uh, I love that. I posted I it one time that. on Instagram, and it went like nuts viral and yeah. i just kind of stuck with it i'm holding my chicken you're relentlessly you that yeah. i love that bro in cannabis everyone should be that relentlessly themselves yeah awesome yes sir even your store you walk in and it's masonic there's no you, you know exactly what's up talk about some of the like talk about the lead up to the store like how'd that come about so i had a i have e-commerce too you know and it was just going really good and I got a little lump sum and um, shout out my business partner, uh, Doc. He, he hit me up. I got, in, I got in touch with Doc via Oni. And Doc's like, he believed in me too. So he helped me get that rolling ASAP because I, I wanted a store already. That's been a dream of mine. I've always wanted like a, a hobby shop to sell trading cards. You know, seeds are kind of like trading cards. So I got my little hobby shop, you know what I mean? Not that that's what I'm doing there, but, you know, people do hang out there and they do have their own trading cards, you know? So it's a gathering place. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a gathering place. You guys seen it yesterday. People go there, they support, they hang out, they go on their merry way and every weekend at the store and it just natural, all natural, you know, Fairfax out of all places, this was never like a battle plan it was just like the universe put us on fairfax for a reason you know if people don't know fairfax is literally that like the epicenter of street culture um in la california it's the mecca for designs and art and he's right on there so when you go to fairfax if you're coming out to cali your first or last stop should be masonics on fairfax it's no, a no. dope store. I, I bought a figurine of yourself. We both did. It's, yeah. Bro, yeah, you're doing real. We got we're action figures of Masonic now. <laughs> yeah. You don't go by the store and get an action figure. Well, we don't know if you're part of the culture then out <laughs> I mean, in LA. They're going to pull your culture card if you ain't got you one know, of them action come check figures. In for real, fool. <laughs> oh, straight yeah. up. Yeah. Action figure check. Compton to Fairfax. What, what brought that about? The action figure. Oh, man. I did the comic book. I did the coloring book. So it was time. It was only right. I did the action figure, hair gel coming soon. You know, we're doing hair every, gel I'm coming soon. Serious, you know, Are you serious? Oh, everything, You're everything. about to blow me away, bro. <laughs> yeah. About to go LA gear on them and shit. Uh, bro, you know, I was thinking about kicking a mullet out. You know what I mean? I'm ready. I love it. But Flash yeah. in the past. I'm loving it. I'm just, I'm just on it. Like, you know, uh, just being me, man. No, I love that, yeah, bro. Yeah. That's what it's about. Shit. It's, uh, it's, it's unapologetically too. It's, yes. it's, it's like, Hey, I'm different. And this is what it is. Like, I, I think that that's being praised more in society more than anything. I think that we all gravitate towards that. Like I said, even your collabs are that even it's organic. Right. So yep. it seems like you build a friendship and then you guys do a collab. Yep. It's never like, Oh, you're, you, you're hot. Like let's, let's work. It's more like, like, hey, we've been friends for a while. Like, maybe we should do something. And I'm friends with a lot of these guys, and we've yet to do an official collaboration because it's not about that. It's about friendship on some, you know, you know, some happy shit. But it, it is what it is. I'm, I'd rather be your friend than get into business with you because business is good. You know, I could only see it compromising our friendship. Yeah. And, and it has with some of my breeders that I've done official collaborative efforts with. Where it's all like, hey, man, like this came up, like, let's not do it officially. And I'll be like, I get it. You know, this business. So sometimes it's worth keeping the friendship what it is and preserving that over trying to do a business with them just because we're tight friends. No doubt. Wow. No doubt. Got you. Okay. 
Well, if you don't mind running through, could you run through some of your breeding collabs and what came out of it? I, I know people are so interested in your breeding collabs. So I've done a, I did the, some of the first papaya fem Tropicana F2 hybrids ever. And I did those for Oni. So Wilson F1, Trapaya Punch, three, three Pooties, Trop Gun, and I'm, I'm missing one. But uh, I did those five. So that was like my first collaborative effort. I did a strains for an established you know, breeder. And then uh, the second official collaboration I did was with Capulator. And I, I got a Shiver Me Timbers from him, took it home, crossed it to my Wilson F1. I tested those, had like three keepers, smoked 10 varieties of hash, five flowers of it. Like I was already well into the V2 of it before, uh, you know, Cap had got into it. But that was like my first, my second official collaboration. But that, and then, you know, all the breeders that I popped their seeds, they're well aware of it. <coughs> so I call them force collabs. And it's become like this coined phrase now that people use now. And it's like, I'll just grab your gear, mix it to mine. I'll do my own hunting, you know, like I pop the seeds myself, find my own female, which is a lot of the work and then uh, cross it. And then it'll be like, I won't, I won't advertise it, advertise it as is like, I'm not going to use their name to sell my strain. It's like, it's just another strain guys. Like, don't, don't flatter yourself. I've had breeders get like, why didn't you tag me? It's like, cause I fucking spent money on this and I could do whatever I want. No offense with this shit, you know? But much respect to all the breeders and, and OGs and everybody I've ever bought seeds off of, but never take it personal just because I didn't do something. You so know? For it's more about the variety. It's more Straight like this up. is the only way we're going to be able to get this style of genetics yeah. is if I take a tropic or I take this strain and breed it with mine. a lot of closed minded uh, seed makers. You know, I'm not worried about what they're doing. So why are they worried about what I'm doing? You know? It seems like we struggle a lot with that in cannabis. Yeah. A lot of closed-minded people. Yep. Worried about other people. I yeah. can assure you I never worry about nobody's breeding practices. I, I got a Herm this morning from one of your favorite breeders. And I just say this like, you know, say it like I say. And it's like, I'm not going to go on a crusade. I'm not going to tag them. I'm not even going to let anybody know because I know their motive. And my message is that, like, grow more seeds. And it happens. It just happens. It happens. That's part of chasing seeds. We've all dealt with that is sometimes you can't control when you're breeding two great strains that maybe a few herms pop out. But guess what? Like we've heard multiple times on First Smoke of the Day, you know, low, grow low key, Mr. Cushington, and now you. Yeah, yeah, a couple herms, and then you find a diamond, that's, a beautiful diamond. That's the beauty of the hunt, you know? <laughs> like, like, bro, I have to grow through all these herms and mels and runts and just mm. doo-doo before I found something keeper, you know, something that I like. And, and, and the more you pop, the more keepers you'll find, you know? It's just, it's just part of getting busy, baby probability right yeah it's it get busy the more shit you throw out the wall the more shit that's gonna stick you know like if you pop one pack and you're gonna base their catalog every other million strains they made off of that you're closed-minded you shut yourself off from that much a uh, possibility now you got only these artists to work with me i'm like freaking i'm digging in the archives i'm digging in here i'm digging everywhere man i, I take i'm on it you know i'm very much aware of the plant and People get it mixed up sometimes. For I, sure. I like what you said. It's if I forgot to do something, don't take it personal. No doubt. No doubt. Especially when we're smoking a bunch of weed. Yeah. No doubt. You know what I mean? No like, doubt. No doubt. Shit. And that's just part of the four principles that I learned from this little book. You know, everything you do, do it like impeccable. You know, uh, you know, do it to the best of your ability. Be impeccable with your word. You know, uh, don't take nothing personal. And there's one more. But like these are four things to live by in UBI. You know what book it was? It's called The Four Agreements. Okay. Or I something like that. No, I think at least I like a leaf or something, right? <laughs> yeah, it's like four leaves. Joe Rogan's talked about it. Like a leaf yeah, on yeah, there yeah. or something. I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, All right. Yeah. <laughs> so you're born and raised in LA. 
But man, you know what's funny is like you remind me of like a down south dude. Oh man, well I'm from South Central Los Angeles, there baby. You know? <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> it's just crazy though, though. Like for real. Like yeah, I don't know. Yeah. You would do well down there, you know? Mm-hmm. Like I'm a down south dude, and uh you just remind me of one of those dudes that I would meet and just be Relatable. into some shit, always into some shit. Yeah. That was different. You know what I mean? That like put you on some game where you're like, wait, what? You know, well, I've been hearing rumblings that they call you guys, you know, you and your your buddy, the new Cheech and Chong. You oh, know, man, <laughs> I mean, we're, we're it's just consistency work. You know, uh, I've been traveling around the world. I've been to Barcelona three times. Like, wow. Showing faces is it was an overnight thing. I've been doing this little Instagram weed trek for like four <laughs> to five years, to say the least. You know, as soon as I seen it, I'm like, Lou, I need to get on that train. And not really like, ooh, but like, those are cool guys. I can, uh, you know, I like, I like their vision. Oh, you're funny. You know, can I be your friend? It's a new way to be in social. Yep. And I think that's even about to elevate. And people are like kind of looking at it a little bit shook. You know what I mean? Like this metaverse talk and all this other shit coming down. What's your thoughts on like going digital and, and things like that? Adapt, man. Don't get left behind. I'm not too versed, but... uh. I know how to acclimate, you know? That's one thing I could do. I could I could get I could get jiggy with it. Whatever it is. You should you should you should write a write a book or something, do some poetry or something. You you got that word play down, man. <laughs> <laughs> Since I met you, I've been like, man, you ran so many word play schemes by me. Yeah, I'm, that I'm got start, me I'm just right rapping. out of the back pocket. R.I.P. Draco. Yeah. yeah. What's it like? seeing people growing your gear all over the world and now smoking hash where i'm sure people are popping up on (laughs) you and being like hey i grew this strain out and you're the one who bred it and look at this look what look what you did for me look what you did for my garden it's surreal man i've gotten some uh good stories like yo mace like i'm so glad i did that trade with you man because you know seeds are expensive and and nobody would trade me quality seeds you know, he gave me a nice piece. It was, uh, you know, those giraffe pieces. I think it's bluegrass or something like that. He gave me a bluegrass giraffe. And I gave him, you know, seeds amount in trade plus some with the cherry on top. Because, you know, I'm nice like that. And uh, he grew all those out. He's swimming in hash right now. He's all like, nobody else would have did. Like, he's like, I was able to, like, pay for my house. Like, I was able to pay rent because everything said was what it was. It's you. You said it was going to hash and it hashed. That was cool, though. You did a glass for seeds trade. Yeah. And I saw you promote that. Yeah. Shoot yeah. me pictures of your rig. Yeah. And if I like it, we'll do seeds for, for glass. I've gotten some really nice trades. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What, Other than glass. What's the motivation behind all of that? Like, where did you see that done before? Or like, you know, what, what, what triggers you to want to do that? I didn't want to spend no money on glass. Glass is expensive. But you're the I feel like your your marketing and your way of engagement mm-hmm. with your with your audience is just really different. It's is uh, it him? Do you do you do it sporadically or do you, you know it's all it's a lot of sporadic shit. When I do do stuff that's uh methodical, yeah. Don't get me wrong, the numbers are, are better. Better, right? But because that's my problem. I'm sporadic. I'm last minute and I'm sporadic. So it's like, I know I would have better results if I actually gave people notice, so but like, there's something about it. I don't know. It's weird. So like I did a free seed day with like a month, you know, 28 days. And that's like the day I got the thousand person line. Yeah. And that was like the only time I've ever done like a, Hey, wait for this, wait for this, wait for this. I've never done a seed drop like that. Never been like, Hey, 12 AM. 30 packs only. <laughs> it's ne- I've never been that it's guy. It's fun though, isn't it? it? To me, like, you know, I, people, you can only fool people for so long. But once in a while, the way you did a thousand people lined up on Fairfax, yeah. bro, that's crazy. Uh, Supreme's not doing that right now. They 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 haven't had a, a thousand person line in a long time, but I think it's because they, they got it down to like, you know, safe to say Supreme's knows what they're doing. Oh, you know yeah, of I mean? course. But it just shows you like you see a thousand people on Fairfax in a line. Mm-hmm. You're like, what so is what going, what's on? going on? The police what was it like that day? Run police, us through a little bit. The police are like, what's happening over here? And we're just having a meet and greet and a new T-shirt drop. So, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> that's awesome man that's awesome yeah, yeah. it shows the community yeah. you have a strong community around you man that I, just shows i, I walked down the thousand people line up you have like, the chicken do you mean the chicken man one of these that would be nice. the chicken no doubt i'm gonna have you to gotta do a chicken. meet and greet with how the far chicken? were some of the people who went from did you see like where some oh, people new york uh, wow there's some people All from over, like uruguay paraguay, paraguay fucking flew in for it they were from there I don't know if they flew in, but they're from there. You know what I mean? Homies flew in from New York, New Jersey, name it. They're probably there. You know, it was all over. Homies. Love, man. Yeah. The streets came out. Hell yeah, the free seat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We hooked these boys up, man. Your own. We these had a boys, bunch of dope. these boys were catching flights. Yeah, hell yeah, they were catching flights and popping beans. Yeah, had some had some dope breeders. You know, help out with that. Like Exotic Mike sent me a bunch of oh, stuff for wow. them. That's, that's not something you big just shout that's out. That's a big homie for real. Man. You don't shout just get Exotic, exotic Mike. Mike seeds. You know nah. what I mean? But at Huge Free Day, you do. You know, so like Soul Fire sent some stuff. Um, you know, tons of people, tons and tons of people. But you know, those are like the ones I was like, you know, Sun Grown Mids. He's a really good friend of mine. He does really cool legacy hybrids, like eighty eight G thirteen hash plant. He'll cross it to Gushers. You know, like we're talking about the best of both worlds right now, you know, like the Biscotti 88, you know, like things like that. So it's like crazy to see, you know, the vision that some of these cats have. Yeah. Straight Man. up. Yeah, I'm shivering over here. <laughs> cold, cold, man. My dog's on like joint number six. Yeah. yeah. You making me feel like a lightweight over here, man. This some of these are too I'm still on so. the first joint. You're like three hog legs in, and now you're smoking some skinnies and shit. Yeah. Oh, man. how do you? What's your favorite way of smoking? I like taking dabs out of my terp slurper. Where's that at? That's at the house. That's too much. Damn. I See why I don't dab? I would need like twelve things just See to take. See why I don't dab, bro? Yeah. It yeah. gets too technical. Yeah. You gotta rock a puff it's, it's too damn technical. Uh, the puff co. What do you think about that? Convenient. Uh, when I travel, I always take it with me. It's just. Uh, Shout out to Puffco. I man. like to take huge dabs, so it might get gunked up, but that's nothing a new atomizer can't fix. So, you know, yeah. Puffco, super convenient. As far as like a daily driver, something to just keep at, maybe for the light smokers, you know, like the, the, the geeky smokers. You You're know? like a medium head. Yeah. If you, Puffco, right? You're yeah. not like fully heady. I take like a 0.3. Point five dab, you know. I'm just, and you're doing it every, yeah, yeah. I'm. You got to heat that banger up. Yeah, I, I got to heat it up. You know, I used to going at least six hundred. If you're taking like a point four, what was it like? Ooh. What was your first time dabbing? Mm. Bho for sure. I think it was at downtown patient group. You DTPG. know, DTPG. Shout out to yeah. DTPG. Yeah. Shit, I would say just no. Nah, I'm not gonna say no names, but they used to <laughs> they used to have a yeah, bar, no. and they used to call them future pipes. They weren't even it was dabbing wasn't even a thing. It was just like this is the future pipe bar. Probably dabbing, like take a dab at the future pipe bar. They always been and uh, ahead. They had some cool shit there, bro. Like mm -hmm. even now that I think about some of the stuff they had to offer, like those concentrates were pretty nice at the time. And uh, that's where I first started dabbing was at DTPG. They had this ugly little glass nail that you used to heat up and you put the bowl over it. And that's how you went in back in the days. But that's that's close to 10 years plus ago. They were like some of the first people doing rosin when that curved to that whole group. Right. Like you used to be able to go there and you would literally see uh, rosin presses so you could buy flour and then turn around to get it pressed into rosin. So buy two eighths, press one into rosin and. I mean, they've always, they're, they're like a LA staple, yeah. DTP, GCCC, you know, that whole scene. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out down. And then I used to go to this spot in Gardena called a uh, fountain of well-being and they, they used to have nice concentrate there and, you know, just went up the ladder. I used to make my own uh, backyard boogie fucking shatter and push it on Compton Boulevard. I used to backpack my packs, the air, all the shit I grew, trim it all myself. Dress up nice, put on my little seller's outfit, and and you were going to shop. What you guys, you guys buying weed? What the fuck you mean? I have a Pikachu shirt on. Like I wasn't like your average, you know, seller. You know, they're like, <laughs> they're like get your ass back here. Like you're fucking walking around with all that stuff. Like how much? You know, fifteen hundred a pound type shit. Mm -hmm. I used to make my own shatter, fifteen a gram all the way up, and I did this as you know, branded Masonic. Nope. 
I was oh, just, just, just shattered. Just me. I mean, the grind, the hustle to get to where you were at today, how long did it honestly take? Be real, you know, because the people really need to know that like, it's you ever it's re- not like a, a there, year to two year there's, thing. There's another book called Outliers. It takes 10 years, man. 10,000 hours, bro. 10 years. Minimum. Minimum. Before you feel a comfy difference. Comfy. 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 I like how, yeah, yeah, comfy. Yeah. 10 years. Okay. Of, of whatever it is. You boxing, 10 years. You, you, you running, 10 years. Full time, 10 years. 10,000 hours. There you go. You're a man. You get it in. Yeah. Got to be that long. Yeah. And I did my 10,000 hours of smoking, growing, safe to say, hustling too. And now you're getting up there on the breeding. Now we're trying to get some breeding in, in hand. And that's, and, and you know, it's a it's, it's good thing you say that because, you know, I'm just getting started and look how, you know, look, look where we're at already. I'm already doing back crosses. I'm keeping around my male going on year three. You know, I'm only 29. I got strains for three years now. Like, I'm 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 learning and I'm paying attention and I and I get it. I take I take a notice of all the he's not a breeder shit. All right, I'm gonna be a breeder. And then what's the next fucking thing you're gonna wave at, motherfucker? Yeah. Nothing. That's what it is. That's yeah. what life is. It's a journey of just conquering each level or each stage, I should say. Because you've been like in different stages and different phases and coming for where you come from, you gotta learn how to adapt to your environments quick. Yep. So out of survival, you know what I mean? It's yeah. it's that's what this game breeds. So that's dope. You managed to do all that because like, you know, me personally, even like, you know, on the girl inside, it's like I'm not a fan. You know what yep. I mean? I'm not a fan. It's a real it's a real commitment. Like it's it's, you know, at the end of the day, it's I don't think the consumer knows enough how much of a commitment and sacrifice it is to be dealing with plants. You know what I mean? Yep. It is uh, it's an everyday thing to be a G, you know what I mean? You got to got to do it every day. <laughs> oh, I mean, that's 100%, bro. You said it perfectly. It's literally your life. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, My no, man, he no don't stop up. with it. What, what, is, what are you working on currently? Anything that, uh, that we could talk about? Uh, popping tons of seeds, looking for new uh, breeding stock to hit to my... Oh, so you know, famous Wilson that I hit everything okay. to, but uh, you know, just honing my craft might might do some reversals, might do this, might do that, you know, mm-hmm. you know, playing and tinkering yeah. and trying to find some things I'm that's the future. Popping everybody's shit though, that's what that's what that's love. Yep, I might got everybody's beams. You name it, I probably got a little bit of it. It's probably in the ground already, probably already flowering. Yeah, I'm into it. I'm a fan first, so I get everybody's stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Any uh any other breeders that you uh you really enjoy their work? You know, I got a shout out Oni off top, you know, uh shout out shout out all my peers, man. Shout out all my homies that keep close with me, you know. But as far as, you know, it's 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 a tough game out there. It's a tough game out there. Shout out everybody, you know? But, you know, shout out Oni. <laughs> hey, hey, if he didn't shout you out, don't take a personal. Oh, <laughs> quit playing, quit quit play. you know? Yeah, for real though, guys, you know. Cuz it is hard to remember. Quit playing. Quit playing. <laughs> Collapse is the future though. I no, think. That's but, so cool. But uh right now, you know, and 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 where you're at in the game, what are you what are you smoking on? What do you I'm enjoy smoking flavor some, wise? This is Skittles straight from third gen from Ego Clash. Okay. So this is straight from from them. Uh I smoked a indoor? bunch of I don't think it was indoor. Oh, but it, okay. it, it did smoke like indoor though. You <laughs> okay, know what I mean? okay, like, okay. I've been smoking indoor this whole time and I don't mind it. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, it's fire, huh? Yeah. Uh, I smoked some straight uh, Skittles. I got some gelato 41 Cushmans. I got some uh acai. And uh, some Z33 from my buddy Calaveras Grower. He, he shot me a bunch of that. Uh, Sounds fire. Yeah, that's what I'm smoking right now. Hash? Some weed. Flour. Oh. How are you smoking hash wise? Hash? Ooh, I smoked some pancakes uh, from uh, Kenjana. Uh, really good full melt pancakes, you know. Uh, I got some Real Deal Resin. Uh, G Coins did some of my strains, the Wilson hybrids. You got some. Uh, wedding cake, watermelon, Skittles, Wilson, and some papaya bee whiz, Wilson hash, and then hash and flowers. They did a honey bananas cross to Wilson. Ooh, we got to try world. some of that. Yeah, Papa's that and Barley's, shit was fruit blonde. Toss. It was 
It was nice. <laughs> look, shut look. I got this. I honey. can't believe you didn't bring the turf slurper, bro. Man, you know, <laughs> that thing is is too much, man. It's too much. They got a uh, hash and flowers, honey banana pot is out of this Damn. world. Yeah, keeping me. They Where'd they get that at? They, they look nice, huh? Where'd they get that at? Where'd you get that at, man? man. man. Get a so hash and what flowers, else? baby. Hash and honey flowers. bananas times Wilson, which is papaya trop F2. It's banana OG papaya times Tropicana F2. All terps and potency. Three of my favorite strains all put together. That's wow. Wilson. Yeah. Damn. You're killing it, bro. No tangy. No tangy. And you got the Wilson volleyball at the shop. If anybody wants to go up and see the real Wilson, you can see Masonic at Fairfax. What on the weekends, right? Fridays, uh, 12 to 6, Saturday, Sunday, 12 to 7. Pull up. That's where we kick it, unless noted otherwise. But I'm there every weekend doing this. That's crazy, <laughs> man. For real. Yeah. True dedication to the game. Um, shit makes it his own. He just makes it his own. That's what's so cool about it. It's He's such in touch with the people. Yeah, You're there in you touch go. Touch with the people. You're in touch with your audience. Talk about like the technical skills and shit. Like, how'd you get into all that? Like making memes. Like understanding social media and like kind of like you know being a private person, but still being able to reach out and like touch your audience and so, connect with the people. You know what I mean? I always keep it. You know. Keep it funny. No, nobody wants to know if your wife yelled at you. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, uh, nobody wants to know that shit. So I've always kept it funny. You know, I never got too personal with my audience. Right. Let them see. Let them see some bad, but like right. not when your Keep wife throws the remote at you, you know? So uh, memes, I came from the 4chan side of the world. I was on 4chan when I was like 15, 16. So I, I'm in tune with a nice meme, how to correlate, how to get an audience riled up, whether it be in a good or a bad way. I, I, I know how to move that shit. So, and it just, you know, you attract more, more, more bees with honey than with vinegar. So, you know, I've been a nice guy lately. Very nice. You know, I'm just, it's just, it's, it's easier on me. I'm a, I get a lot of anxiety off of any stresses. Now I'm getting old. I'm only 30, but I feel like, Jeez, you know, yeah, man. Just, just just yesterday we went to the Strabinsky store. We got yelled at. You were stressing out, huh? <laughs> you see me? I'm like, Ooh. you thought you thought we were. <laughs> you want to be the good neighbor on Fairfax yeah. too. You don't want to like, cause any problems. He's going back. Is it, yeah, he's going yeah. back. I left my phone out there smoking, <laughs> puffing. Yo, yeah. you were walking behind us like like you were back in Compton having someone's back, like yeah. unwillingly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> unwillingly, like, yo, man, that's, the, that's, the, the that's, next door neighbor's about to get a fight. I guess I got to have his back right yeah. now. Fuck. Primordial nah. instinct, you know what I mean? It's just. Nah, it, not at all. It was all love. It's in me. It's Thank in God me. Fairfax is chill. Mm-hmm. It's been good over where you're at for sure. You're you're in a nice little ducked off area right there by Sherbinsky. Shout out to Sherbinsky. You already know. Um yeah, shout out Sherby. You already know Big Sherb on Fairfax, Masonic holding it down. Man, any any moving into into the future, any things mm-hmm. you want to talk about, any projects, any releases, any anything that you know you want the people to be on a little bit ahead of time. Oh man, just just keep your eyes peeled, you know. Uh you can't grow in your backyard for the rest of your life. So I don't want to be 40 slinging beans. You know, I'm trying to. You kept, you kept it on the high. How have you kept it on the low? Is it is it blowing up or are you, you you keep it on the low? Just, I'm, I'm, I'm nice to my neighbors. You know? yeah, yeah. Just keep it on the low, low. Right? Yeah, yeah. So. It's better to be where you're where you're where you're at. Yeah. Keep it real with people. Yeah, we we figuring it out, you know. Yeah. It's a, it's it's getting bigger than me now. So Exactly. You know. How do you deal with that? Just be creative. Mm, if, yeah. As long as okay. your creativity doesn't get tampered with, you should feel free to move. You feel free. Once they start to tamper with your creativity, that's when you fucked up, you know. That's when you get a little depressed, you know. Maybe lose a little control. Yep. So just be in control of the creative process and you be all right. That's you knowing what you like out of business. I like hearing that because then if you get deals and offers coming your way, you know that that's something you want to control is the creative process. That's the most important thing to you because that's you. And and don't get me wrong, you know, you're not always right either. So keep others stress in mind as well. 
and it helps grow. Agreed. Yep. So you've been always been the tastemaker of your group. You kind of lead the charge on what's next and where you're going. Yep. I've always been, uh, I like my own, my own shit. I like what I like. Yeah. yeah. Man. Hard to sway your opinion on liking something. Yeah. Not um, to your liking. I mean, if I listen to whatever other people like and they told me not to listen to, I'd be stuck with nothing. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Or the shit. You would have the shit you, everyone has, right? Yeah. You'd like, hey, don't don't mess with him or don't listen to that. You know, I'd be left with nothing. So I just kind of just do my own thing. You got to. Yeah. What inspired the handlebar? Uh, my grandpa has a mustache. Dude, that thing's kicking. So, like, I grew up with a grandfather with a mustache. So, I that's, just, I just let it, I let it be one day. Things kicking. Broke the internet, and so, I was like, it kind of, kind of works. Dude, and you I mean you cut it off at the perfect point? Yeah, I do my own. I do my own. You yeah. got your own. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that makes Sonic stash. Yeah. Holy shit! <laughs> this yeah. dude's no, been I'm teasing a mullet, so that's why he's like, he's trying to. Oh, dude. Out I mean, rock that. Not shit. many people yeah. can kick the the handlebar mm -hmm. like that. I mean, that that thing's tough. Yeah, because it filters all the terps and <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Save it. a little something for later. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> ah, straight out of the turkey later. What do you got going on the rest of the day, man? Uh, got some homies in town. I might link up with, go smoke some hash, and I got some people that I need to talk to and just do work, man. Go say hi to some plants. Say hi to some chickens. Say hi to the fam. Got to hang out with the daughter and the son a little bit. He's on vacation. You know, balance, balance, baby. What do you Getting think the 2022 wave in cannabis is going to be? Is it going to be gas and candy? Is it going to be gas? Is it going to be something different? I like see this resurgence of OG and people going back to the wheel. But I honestly think in every pocket, everything is alive in its own way. We're just on this Instagram culture where we only know each other. So we dictate our own wave. But the rest of the world is still going to continue what they do. You know, go but, still uh, be smoking ice cream cake. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Bunch. <laughs> exactly. But but for this for the Some most runs. part, the resurgence of OG is is hard. You know, I, I see a lot of people bringing it back. Uh, we're going back to the wheel, and you know, I'm 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 the type of guy who never excluded everything. I'm I already was back going to legacy strains. I got a OG cut from '97 from my buddy Buddy Kilowatt, sixty year old deadhead. He gave me his Blackwater OG cut that he won high times with back in like 16 or something like that. Or yeah, yeah. Second place Blackwater OG cut. I got, I got, you know, ready for every hype wave. I'm always, I'm like, what, what you got for me now? You know? So, yeah. Your genetic library is off the chain. Yeah. I've seen some of what you've used across and it's a lot of hard to get stuff, man. Like, yep. like what you just mentioned, I haven't heard anybody. So now I can look forward to getting those crosses. Yeah. 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 Yep. They're out there. It's just, you know, be nice to people. They might want to give you something. Yeah. You know, I'm never ill will. I never sold a cut for thousands of dollars. I just cross it to Wilson and that's it. I hear your seeds might take a pivot um, and you might not be able to get them for a little bit or, or, or are we going to be able to get them and where should get we it, get them? Get it while it's good, guys. You know, <laughs> get it while it's good. I don't like to, like I said, I don't like to be the guy that's like 30 packs, 12 a.m. drop, but like, just get them while they're available. You yeah. know, they're well, transition takes time and transition. Yeah. Sometimes there's it like it just takes a little bit. So, yeah. You see, see Junkie, his old packs, you don't see them no more. Got to get them at the store now. You know, just do the writings on the wall, guys. Like, you know, Mace can't sell seeds out his backyard forever at this price. So get it while it's good. And I'm not going to force feed anybody. That's all I could tell them, motherfuckers. Straight up. I like that, man. Any last closing words? Anything you want to leave them with? Yo, uh, tap in at Masonics on Fairfax.com, MasonicSeeds.co. First smoke of the day. Make sure you subscribe. Tell all your homies. Yo, yeah. man, tell a friend to tell a friend. It's Masonic Smoker out of Compton. We're here in LA. It's first smoke of the day, episode 33. And we're out, man. Peace. All white ashes. Yo, what's up, First Smoke family? Just want to take a few seconds to shout out some special partners of the show. Make sure you guys go check out Grow Generation, the largest hydroponic retailer in the nation, over 60 retail stores, growgeneration.com. 
They also carry some awesome products there. Blackleaf, tell them a little bit about our next sponsor, Power SI. This is what I use in my garden. This is what the best growers in the country are using. This is what the best growers in the world are using. For more information on our partners, click in the description below. We're going to include all the links, all the information, everything you guys need to know to get down with any of these companies. Shout out to Grow Generation, Power SI. We appreciate you guys. First Smoke Family forever. Hey, what up? It's Blackleaf. I'm here to talk about one of the sponsors for First Smoke of the Day podcast, AthenaProducts.com, Athena Nutrients. If you want to see some of the premier growers in the country who rock Athena products, check out Athena.ag on Instagram, and you can see everybody who rocks with Athena. First Smoke of the Day podcast, Athena Plant Nutrients. Yo, Jungle Boys have been playing with fire since 2006. Pioneer cultivators based out of Los Angeles. You can find their product at TLC Collective in LA. For more info, go to jungleboys.com and follow at Jungle Boys on all platforms. Welcome to the jungle. Welcome to the jungle.